All right, now let's get a little more focused. We now understand what economics is. We understand the ideas of costs and benefits. Now we're going to answer the question, what is microeconomics? What is microeconomics? Well, in our quadrant, we said that economics is the scientific study of how individuals, uh, uh, organizations, O, oh, and societies um, deal with deal with the problem of scarcity, okay? That's economics. And so microeconomics is going to take us into this quadrant right here, and in microeconomics we are only concerned with individuals and organizations. And so that's what I'm going to write on here. Over here I'm going to write individuals, and you're going to write it down too because you're taking notes. And sometimes we call individuals households households. And the other kind of unit we call organizations, organizations, and sometimes we refer to as organizations in, in microeconomics, we refer to them as firms, okay? Firm is an old school word for business, and so what we're talking about is businesses and organizations here. These are groups of people, kind of small groups of people, because if we were talking about large groups of people, we could talk about societies, like an entire state, like the state of Georgia or the state of Florida. Okay? That's, that's a, a large number of people. That's millions and millions of people. That is a large group of people. Organizations, even though some organizations might have like a million people or 500,000 people, it's still a smaller group. Okay, so businesses and organizations, and then individuals and households. Households typically have what, like three, four, five, maybe six or seven people in them, right? Or individuals, okay? And so microeconomics is the scientific study of how individuals and organizations deal with the problem of scarcity. Now, when we talked about the problem of scarcity, we said that the goals, oops, that's an L in there, the goals that these organizations or individuals are trying to achieve, that they would like an infinite number of whatever it is that they want. And so their goals, their desire for their goals exceeds their resources that they have available or what we call factors of production. So they don't have enough resources to get all, to, to fulfill all of the goals at the highest level that they want, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what we call the goals of individuals and households and what we call the goals of organizations and firms. Now, individuals, what they want more than anything in this world is they want utility. Okay, they want satisfaction. They want fun. That's what you want. You want fun. You want excitement. You want good tasting food. You want to listen to good music. You want to dance to that good music. Maybe you want to even sing that good music. You want to drive a car. You want to feel comfortable. You want to either sit in air conditioning or you want to sit out there in the hot sun or maybe go swimming. You want to see cool things. You want to go underwater and see the, the, the life under the sea. Or you want to parachute and fly and feel the air and the wind on your face, right? All of that. That satisfaction. The fulfillment of life. That's utility. And here's what you want to do. You and all other individuals in the universe want to maximize their utility. You want the most satisfaction and fulfillment that you can possibly get in your life. And you will use your resources. You'll use your time. You'll use your money. You'll use your car. You'll use the food in your refrigerator. You will use your TV. You will use your access to the internet. You'll use your computer. You'll use your phone. You'll use all the resources you have at your disposal to be able to get the most satisfaction. The most satisfaction that you can possibly get with the limited resources that you have. Now, obviously, if you have more resources, you can get more satisfaction than the next person. And that's one of the reasons why you probably want money, is the more money you have, the more resources that you can have to give yourself more satisfaction. 
where if that person over there has less money than you, they have fewer resources and they can't get as much. They get less, a little less satisfaction than what you're getting. Or if you're the one with less money, you might be a little upset that you're getting a little less satisfaction than the next person over. Okay, so the idea here, now I may be making this sound like it's all about money. It's not all about money. You know, there are people in this world, there are people in this world who with very little money and with very few worldly possessions, with not very many clothes, without much of a car or any car at all, they are able to get lots and lots and lots of satisfaction out of their life. Why? Because the way that they view utility is different than the way other people view utility. That can be you. If you decide that you are going to see the world with a different point of view where the utility that you receive doesn't require all of the money and all of the gizmos and the, and the expensive phones and stuff, that's up to you. See, all of this, this most satisfaction, this maximizing utility is by the perception of the individual. And so we have to understand that, that this idea of utility, when we go from one person to the next, it might be very different. I have friends that really enjoy, uh, they enjoy outdoor activity, okay? They enjoy, you know, running. They enjoy playing football and playing softball. I'm not interested in doing those things. I'm not interested in playing football or, uh, or uh, basketball or actually I hurt myself playing basketball one time. That really frustrated me. I was on a church retreat and, and a bunch of guys, they said, hey, let's play basketball. And I said, I don't want to play basketball. And they said, oh, come on, Ma. We, we, we need just one more person. I was like, fine, I'll play basketball. So I went and played basketball with them for about five or ten minutes, and then I tore my ACL, and I was so mad because I didn't even like basketball, and I didn't even want to play basketball. But there I was, getting very little benefit and giving up the future use of my knee. I, I still have scar tissue. This is like 20 years ago. I still have scar tissue in my knee because of it. But anyway, here's the idea, is that each person on their own, each individual decides for themselves what they get utility from. Okay? I get more utility from reading than I do out of, out of watching movies. I don't even really like to watch movies. I much prefer reading books. And I prefer reading uh, non-fiction books. Most people that I know prefer to read fiction books. But Okay, so individuals, they want to maximize utility. That's what they want. Organizations, they have a different goal. In microeconomics, organizations, they want to maximize what's called profit. Now, profit, that's a money thing, all right? And so organizations in microeconomics, we're going to talk a lot this semester about money. One of the reasons we're going to talk a lot about money is because organizations want money so that they can then, well, really, the, the main reason is what are they doing with that profit? Well, that profit is going to the owners, and the owners of the business, this money, which now belongs to the owners, owners' money, guess what they use their money for? This is awesome, isn't it? You're going to love this because owners are individuals. And so owners are now going to take their money, which is the profit from the firm that they own, and they are going to use that money to maximize their own utility because they're individuals. But the main thing I want you to understand is that the goal of individuals and households in microeconomics is to maximize utility. And the goal of organizations in microeconomics is to maximize profit. So if we're talking utility, we're talking about households and individuals. If we're talking about profit, we're talking about businesses and organizations. Okay? Now, the last thing, last two things I want to go, I want to go to this deal with. There are three questions. Remember the three economic questions that we answer to deal with this problem of scarcity? We're going to answer those three questions, and then also I'm going to show you the, the profit equation. Let's do that real quick. So what I call, this, I call or you're going to want to write this down, and we're going to come back to this profit equation in about two more, maybe next week sometime. The profit equation goes like this. There's a concept called total revenue. Total revenue is all the money earned by a business in its cash register. 
So when you go into the store and you buy something for $10, you hand them $10 and you take your stuff and leave, that $10 goes into the cash register. That's $10 in revenue. But that's not the profit. Even though it says profit is equal to total revenue, this is total revenue minus total cost. What they have to do is that business now has to subtract from that $10 how much they paid for the stuff they sold you. Let's say that they paid $3 for it. So now the revenue they earned was 10, but they had to pay out $3 to, to put it on the shelves. And now 10 minus three is $7. Their profit is $7. They also have to pay rent on the location that they're operating out of. They also have to pay their employees. They have to pay for their electricity. There's a lot of things they have to pay for. Okay? But the basic profit equation, the way that businesses maximize profit, to find out how much profit they have, they have to take the total revenue earned and subtract away the total cost of doing business. Now, I want to show you that this is related to the benefits and cost equation. Remember how I showed you an equation that said net benefit is equal to benefit minus cost? Well, the benefit to doing business is the revenue you earn. And the cost of doing business is the total costs of running the business. And so this profit equation is just very simply a more specific uh, example of the net benefit equation that I just showed you in the, in the previous segment that you watched. Okay, All right, so organizations want to maximize profit and the way they determine their profit is they take the total revenue they earn and subtract away the costs of doing business. We can say something very similar about utility, but we'll do that later. I'm not going to do it right now. The last thing I want to answer now is I want to answer the three economic questions. Three economic questions. Whoops. Questions as they pertain to microeconomics. The first question is what, okay? And it's different for individuals versus organizations. For individuals, the question is what to consume. What should I consume? What is it that I want? Do I want a soda? Do I want water? Do I want a burrito? Do I want a cheeseburger? What should I consume? But for an organization or a firm, it would be what should we produce? What to produce? What should we make? What should we produce? And we're also asking the question, what should we sell? What should we produce and sell? When we make something, we're not going to consume it. See, individuals over here, they are consumers. Write that down. Individuals are consumers. Organizations are producers, okay? And organizations, they produce, excuse me, yes, sorry, I'm, I'm getting this wrong. They want to produce so that individuals can consume, okay? And so they produce what individuals consume. That's what they're doing. Organizations and firms, they are producing things, selling them to individuals, earning a revenue from those individuals, and trying to maximize their profit. When the individuals buy the stuff that the producers are producing, they then consume it, and it gives them utility. And then we'll talk, we're going to talk a lot more about that dynamic another time. So individuals are answering the question, what do I want to consume? Firms are answering the question, what do I want to produce? What do I want to consume? What do I want to produce? Second question is how. How, oh sorry, individuals are answering the question, how to get it? How am I going to get it? Am I going to make it? Or am I going to buy it? Am I going to make what I want to consume? Or am I going to buy what I'm going to consume? Am I going to go make a cheeseburger? Am I going to buy all the things? 
to make a cheeseburger, then cook the cheeseburger myself, and then consume it? Or am I just going to go over to Burger King or Five Guys or McDonald's or something like that or Wendy's, and I'm going to buy the cheeseburger and then eat it? Well, firms, they have to answer the exact same question. How to produce. How are they going to produce it? Slash sell. How are they going to be able to sell this thing? Are they going to make it themselves? Or are they going to buy it from someone else and then sell it to other people? So what I could do is I could buy cheeseburgers and then sell those cheeseburgers to other people. And maybe I only have the cheeseburgers for like five minutes. Or I could get the cow. I could get uh, two kinds of cows, one for beef and one for, for milk, uh, dairy so I can get the cheese. And then I can own wheat fields and I can process the wheat into flour and then make the bread for the bun. And then I can cook it all up and put it together and then sell the cheeseburger. So I have to decide how it is, how is it that I'm going to produce these cheeseburgers to sell them? That's an important question. And then the third economic question individuals have to answer is who will consume it? Is it going to be me? Is it going to be me consuming it? Or am I getting it so that I can give it to my child to consume? Or am I getting it so that I can give it to my wife to consume? Or am I getting it so that we can all consume it? I, I bought a pizza, and now we're all going to consume it. Okay, well, how many slices is everybody going to get? Well, that's another one. Who will consume each slice is an important question. And then lastly, the firms are answering the question, who will get the stuff we sell. Who's going to get it? I have something for sale. I have a car for sale. Who ultimately is going to drive that car away? I would like to sell it to somebody. Should I sell it to the tallest person? Should I sell it to the first person? Should I sell it to the nicest person, or maybe the meanest person. Who should I sell it to? Who's going to get it? Well, you already know the answer to this question. Generally speaking, you can write this down. Who will get the stuff we sell is, usually goes like this. It's, the answer to that question is whoever is willing to pay the most. Whoever's willing to pay the most money. Whoever's willing to pay out the most money for that thing, that's the person that's going to get it. And we call that, ready for this? You want to write this one down. We call that the price mechanism. The price mechanism. And that is a very important thing in what we call markets. Markets are very important in microeconomics, but we're not going to talk about markets right now. This is microeconomics. Okay? Uh, I recommend, make sure you have these notes, go over the notes, think about some of them. If you want to watch the video again, that can be very helpful. But this is the subject that we will unpack and learn about for this entire semester.